Now, every year since 2013, hundreds of thousands of Jews around the world joining together for a special spiritual mission dubbed the Shabbat Project. And this year, over 2,500 Shabbat Project events are planned with more than a million global participants. So joining me with more is founder of the Shabbat Project and chief rabbi of South Africa, Rabbi Dr. Warren Goldstein. Rabbi, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. So lovely to be with you. So tell me what exactly the Shabbat Project involves and, and what's it, what it's all about. Yeah, well, it's, it's all, as you said, it was started in, in 2013. It started in South Africa, originally just for the South African Jewish community. And it was a call for the entire community to keep one Shabbat together in a spirit of unity, to celebrate, to appreciate what the gift of Shabbat is to Jewish unity, to Jewish identity, and to the Jewish future. And uh, it, it captured the hearts of people around the world, and it spread uh, in a people's movement, which uh, which is now spread to more than 1,500 cities and uh, and 100 countries all around the world. And, and really what it is, is, is Jews all around uh, in every part of the world keeping this one Shabbat, but coming together in a spirit of unity and tremendous events which are happening, as you mentioned, more than 2,500 events all over the world in Israel, in, the, in North America, of course, in, in Europe, South Africa, Australia, all over the world. And there's a, a tremendous sense of, of Jews saying, listen, to we, we want to unite and we want to define ourselves by our values and our vision, instead of saying, well, you know, there's, there's a rise in anti-Semitism, and therefore we are defined by the hatred of others. We want to say we want to come together and to rally together as Jews, not because there's a crisis, not because we're in danger, but because we are celebrating what it is to be a Jew. And the vision of the Shabbat Project is saying at the heart of Jewish identity is Shabbat. It is the key to rejuvenating Jewish families and Jewish communities. And I think that's why there's been such a natural reception for it. People are thirsting. They are looking mm. for that, that sense of connection around the Shabbat table. And, you know, there's some heartwarming stories from all over the world. Well, so again, you know, maybe if you can tell me a little bit more about what inspired you to start this project. Did you, did you see a particular need in your community in South Africa? Or, or did it start maybe more humbly of, of just, uh, I, I want to do something nice for the community? Now, I saw a need, and I think that, you know, this is the, the powerful thing about Shabbat. It, um, it, it really is, has many of the answers of some of the greatest challenges that we face. On an individual basis, I think Shabbat has a compelling message for, for the times that we live in, where there's a complete sense of distraction and fragmentation, you know, where, where there's never a moment of life when, when a person is truly off. Families are feeling the pressure. There's rising anxiety. And, uh, and, and Shabbat has a way of pulling us together when we do it in this immersive experience, the sense of, you know, switching off cell phones, the sense of coming together, putting away car keys, coming together as a family around the Shabbat table. There is something so powerful about the immersive magic of that. But also Jewish communities. And I think, you know, this is something that I saw in my own community, but I've seen it all around the world. There's a sense that Jewish communities are searching for unity, searching for a way um, to bond with each other and, and, and to find each other. And that's why I think there's been such a resonance, for a natural resonance, a resonance. Sometimes you find in a project that uh, you have to push it and try and convince people and cajole them, but actually this, this moves in the, in the other way. Like, for example, this year in Israel, um, the project is larger than it has ever been. I mean, you know, there, there are more than 100 municipalities involved. There are hundreds of thousands of children in, um, in the Mamlachti schools involved in the project. The youth movement's involved in the project. There's really a sense of saying, you know, at the end of the day, we are Jews. And we, there may have been a divisive election in Israel, a divisive elections in the United States. But we are saying we will not be defined by the politics of our times. We will be defined by our values and who we are. Mm. And, and at the heart of those values is, uh, is Shabbat. So I think because of all those reasons, it has this, this very powerful natural resonance with people. And, 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 and therefore, in a sense, it is an answer to many of the challenges that we face individually, communally, as families. And I think that's why people are searching for it. I think there's a real search for Shabbat itself. So what, what are some of the most unique locations that are hosting events this year? I know, of course, you mentioned that in Israel, uh, it's bigger than ever before, but Israel so, sort of, you could think of it as a low-hanging fruit when you're talking about a global movement. Yes, certainly. But look, firstly, I would say in Israel that Shabbat traditionally has been the, the, um, 
the area of, of like a cultural war in Israel. So I think the fact that it's proving that Shabbat can be a source of unity in Israeli society and not a source of divisiveness, that I think is, is perhaps noteworthy in the Israeli context. But if, if one's looking globally, what, you know, what, what starts to become uh, really interesting from a, from a global point of view is, um, is when one considers, let's say, France. There's a, there's a tremendous um, activity and action in, in France, a beautiful and heartwarming story in Strasbourg. Of course, it's all over France in Paris. Paris, Marseille, uh, Nice, all over France. But in Strasbourg, there's a very heartwarming story of the community in Strasbourg reaching out to a group of young Ukrainian Jews, refugees who are kind of staying in refugee wow. quarters in, in Germany and Switzerland, inviting them to spend the Shabbat of the Shabbat project in Strasbourg as the guests of the community, paying for them to come, looking after them, hosting them, and giving them a gift of Jewish solidarity. So that's you know, it's a heartwarming story wow. that also, you know, Morocco, the Jewish community in Morocco is getting involved for the first time. Wow. And um, and, in, and then you go all the way to San Diego, where there's an established Jewish community. Uh, but but there are more than 180 events across, uh, you know, the San Diego Jewish community. And, you know, it's a community of, um, of uh, you know, tremendous diversity. And, and so it, it, what, what I found always amazing about this is that whether you in, in San Diego, Morocco, Strasbourg, Johannesburg, London, Tel Aviv, or Beersheba, there, there is a commonality and a common Jewish spirit. And, 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 you know, it, it reminds us that we can transcend all of these things that divide us, which are actually superficial when we cut to the essence of who we truly are. And if people want to join in, there's still time. They can go straight on to our website, the shabbatproject.org and you can get all the details and and this is a people's movement you know it's it's not an organization it's a movement so come and join the movement and uh, let's change the world together amazing thank you so much